In this video I'm going to show you how you can configure redistribution for the prefixes from one EPG to another EPG in Cisco ACI network. Uh, my scenario is using uh, ACI simulator version 5.2. You can of course simulate it on version 6 as well or previous versions. Uh, there are very very minor differences but they are not so important. Also you can replicate this on real devices uh, since that would be much better of course. The overall scenario is something like this. Let's say that we have spines and leaves like this. This is a spine 1, this is a spine 2, and I have L1, L2, L3, uh, each one of them a leaf connected to the spines, and this is my overall fabric. Now I have uh, multiple EPGs inside the tenant. Let's say that I have a tenant here, and I'm just going to have a visual representation of the tenants here. Let's say the tenant's name is Alex and Alex has multiple connections to the fabric doesn't really matter which leaf and how many connections we have all you need to know is that this tenant is connected to the fabric this tenant has multiple EPGs in there let's say that for example EPG 1 is one of them EPG 2 is another one and let's say that we have an EPG here which is called EPG internet and what I need to do is to make sure that uh, the routes from EPG1 is uh, kind of redistributed to EPG2 and vice versa. Also, I want to make sure that the routes that we have in EPG Internet is going to be received by EPG1 and EPG2, which means that EPG1 and 2 are going to be able to get to the Internet and, of course, vice versa, because we need to have the route back to an EPG to get to this EPG. That is the normal routing rules that we have here. How can we do this? Uh, there are some uh, workarounds here. First of all, we have redistribution. And in Cisco AT ACI, it is called advertisements of routes. And the second one is going to be part of preferred groups. A preferred group has some members. We have preferred group membership here. And if you just put um, these EPGs, uh, not EPGs as a matter of fact, these subnets that these EPGs have, let's say that this has this subnet and this has this subnet and this one, this subnet. If I just put these subnets under preferred group members, other EPGs are going to receive these subnets that you do not really need to be advertised. Uh, but EPGs should be part of preferred group members before uh, doing this. How can I do that? Let's go to my ACI environment. And I have already done some of this stuff, but I'm going to show you here what I have done. I need to close this one, go to tenants, and I have this tenant Alex here. Alex has multiple EPGs. Some of them are configured under application profiles for example i have a line of business application here that has some application epgs like web epg db epg and there's some random epgs that i have created here also i have under networking some l3 outs and l2 outs l3 outs are more important in my case and one of them is going to be the internet connection that i have so if i just click on this and just go down and open external EPG under this L3 out. I have internet EPG configured. This internet EPG has an IP address space. As you can see, I have configured this as subnets. And one reason that I have done this in this way is uh, that is because I wanted to put them under this preferred group. You can see that I have included them under preferred uh, group. If you just go with uh, this kind of configuration, if I just click on this plus sign, and for subnet I would say 0000 slash 0, uh, if I just do this and click on submit, I'm going to receive an error that says you cannot really put this subnet as a member of a preferred group. So what I needed to do is to just divide it into two different halves uh, by just adding slash one. I made sure that from 0000, 
to 127, 255, 255, 255 is going to be one part, and from 128, 0, 0, 0, 0, to the rest of the, uh, to, to the end, of course, it's going to be another part, and this is exactly what I have done in here. Uh, for IPv6 at this space, of course, I had to do the same thing. Again, if you just go with uh, 0 double colon slash 0, that's not going to be accepted as part of a preferred group. And what you need to do again is to divide this like what I have done here. Uh, in case you have only IPv4, you do not really need to add this IPv6 as well. So when you just put this under preferred group, this means that this EPG is part of a preferred group. Now, whatever other EPGs are uh, that are part of this preferred group, they are going to receive these subnets. Let's say that, for example, I have up here, let's say, web EPG. I have, uh, let me click on this. And under policy, under general, if I just go down, uh, here you can see that this one is not part of a preferred group. Uh, it is excluded. This means that if I want to receive the IP addresses from this, what I need to do is to advertise the IP addresses. And then on this side, I could uh, receive them. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able. One thing that you should know is these are the subnets that I have created. Sometimes uh, you can see that if I just go under this EPG, for example, web EPG, there is a folder that says subnets. If I click on that, this is the subnet that I have created on EPG level. I could do that and uh, there is another way to do that which is configuring the subnet under the bridge domain instead of configuring under EPG. To configure this under bridge domain what you need to do is to go to networking folder under that bridge domain folder. You can see that I have two bridge domains. This one is the most important one because it contains almost most of the EPGs that I have here. If I just open this there is a folder that says subnets. Click on that you can see that I have added all the subnets in here. Now, which one is a better option? Do you really want to go with configuring the subnets under bridge domain or under EPG? That is, uh, I, I have just discussed it on another video that you can just check it. But uh, overall, this is going to give you more, uh, you know, flexibility. Just opening this and then selecting one of these IP address spaces. It doesn't really matter whether this is IPv6 or IPv4. I'm just clicking on one of these addresses. And for advertisement, I need to make sure that, first of all, advertise externally has a check next to that. And then, if I just click on bridge domain itself and go to policy, go to L3 configuration, I have associated L3 outs. Associated L3 outs are going to be the receivers of the advertised routes. So you saw that, for example, I had put a check next to advertise externally for this specific subnet. And now I have just uh, selected, for example, Alex L3 out or MPLS network or some other L3 outs as receivers of these addresses. So two different places should be checked. Uh, if you don't really want to do this, what I like, uh, like I said, what you need to do is to just select a preferred group member as the receivers. So this is how you advertise routes in ACI networking.